All right, welcome back to Perkins Garage. Today we're dealing with my personal truck, the Murderado, uh, trailer brake issues. And of course it's gotta happen like the week before I'm gonna tow my my trailer up to my brother's. So, kinda need trailer brakes for that. Um, so light came on and the last time this happened, it was on and off, then it finally stayed on, and it was because because the module was going bad. Um, and when it actually went bad, it was on when I was towing my camper. And it's not fun towing 28-foot toy hauler without trailer brakes. So I took that to a dealership that time, just because I had no other options, and cost me damn near $200 to have them do it actually might have been a little bit more than that anyway you can go on Amazon and find the trailer brake module I can even show you the part number um, and well this is for an 08 uh, Chevy 2500 HD um, and just do it yourself it's simple look up how to do it on the internet too that's how that's what I did it how I did it. So here's where it's at and basically what you need to do. All right, so here's the part. It's upside down. Zoom in on that. That's the part number. Stay focused. 209 uh, 04439. GM part number. So what happens is the assholes at the dealership won't put any kind of preventative from keeping these from being seized. So uh, obviously this one I had to bust out of there because it was seized inside this little encapsulated nut. And I pulled that out and I was able to get the bolt out. And then I cleaned up the threads and put some anti-seize on there because dealerships just want you to keep coming back. And then I put some dielectric grease on there too, on the new one, and I'll show you where it's at. So all you need is a 10 millimeter socket, whatever you got, 10 millimeter, that's what those heads are. You just loosen them up, you don't even gotta pull them off and they slide up and then you push them out. And then you unplug it. See it? It's right there. And then it plugs into this little dude, Abby. And if you're worth half your weight in salt, you should be able to figure that out on how to unplug it and plug it back in. So, there's that. Yeah. And plug it in and should be good to go. So there, it's that simple to replace a trailer brake control module on a Duramax. Um, I don't deal with Dodge or Ford because I don't, I just, I've always driven in Chevys and they're simple and cheap. And no matter what anybody says, they fucking last long, longer than a Dodge or a Ford. By the way, all you Northerners uh, that deal with salt and shit, you see the Fords running around with Super Duties, mainly. Can any of you guys tell me why the bed on them is always like rotted out and it's sitting lower? I mean, how can you put anything in those beds? I mean, they're newer Super Duties too. I don't understand it. Don't typically have that problem with Chevy. Usually it's these guys here that are rotted out but i replaced this one you can tell by the shitty paint job that i did on it but it's not rusted in there the other side's totally rotted out but that's a cosmetic issue the bed is a structural issue i don't get it please explain to me why that happens ford guys 
then again, I don't know if any poor guys really pay attention to what I'm doing. So, anywho's. All right, there's another quick little video of what we're doing at Perkins Garage here. Still working on Fred. Got got a spindle from the junkyard. You know, the other one was tore apart. Or tore up. Uh, four is in on the driver's side. I think I've showed that before. But... Yeah, it's like January 11th right now, and it's like t-shirt weather. Like, I got my garage door open. It sucks. I need more polar vortex. I want it to be like negative 20, like it usually is in January up here. Keeps all the uh, southerners down where they belong. So, all right. Until next time, I'll give you more updates on what we're doing with Fred and might show videos of what uh, some of the work we're doing. But until next time, we'll see you later.